What's up YouTube, Dell here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an update to Elemental Heroes. Uh, massive shout out to Kyron who is putting his own version of this deck together, um, and I quite like the concept, so I was working with him in order to kind of put this list together so you can see how Wake Up Your Hero uh, helps the deck, and how you can be building this to be a blind go second deck, which I feel have uh, much more potential in this current format, as long as you are able to consistently break boards and build your own boards that your opponent cannot deal with. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe. Getting the video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours will unlock more hero content for you. So we start off with the Elemental Heroes and we are going with free Elemental Hero Stratos. Pretty straightforward and simple on this one. Deal with back row, search your deck out, not a hard once per turn. You name it, this is your Mac Daddy. Uh, and then we've got two Elemental Hero Shadow Mist, so obviously it has a graveyard effect, which is very, very nice. And then it also has another effect that if it is, um, so if it's special times, you get to add a change quick play. So that is your access to your Dark Law, which sadly Dark Law isn't as effective this format as it was in previous formats like Tier Elements, but it's still very, very powerful and good in order to kind of control the graveyard, control board states, especially in um, the Rogue matchups. But you're ideally wanting to get into a quick play spell in order to kind of, during the battle phase, increase one of your monsters and technically get a double attack off. The last two cards we play are the one Elemental Hero Liquid Soldier and, of course, the one Elemental Hero Honest Neos. Um, so, obviously, this is your Honest in a sense, and then your liquid is your normal summon revive from the graveyard, um, or if it is used as fusion material, you get to draw two, ditch, to, uh, ditch one. So it gives you that ability to kind of cycle through plays, um, cycle into your other cards, and go from there. Now, the main card that your Strauss is going to be searching is going to be your Vision Heroes, uh, and mainly your Vision Hero Faris. So, triple Vision Hero Faris on this one. It was so nice that these got a reprint um, in the forms of Battles of Legends, uh, I believe it was Brothers of Legend, technically. So we've got uh, three Faris. No, sorry, Ghost from the Past 2. There you go. Uh, two Faris, two Vion, and annoyingly, two Increase. You have to play two Increase. Uh, well, you don't have to. You can play one if you want. But I almost guarantee you, if you play one, you'll see it in your hand every single time. If you play two, you'll see one of them in your hand every single time as well. But your combo would not be dead. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the um, Vision Hero package, you discard another hero monster, annoyingly, why can't it just be discard any other card, um, to special on this card from the hand. You then get to place a Vision Hero, which will be increased into your spell and trap zone. You then get to activate increase, which will let you tribute off the Faris to summon itself back um, as from the spell and trap zone to the monster zone, and that will then allow you to special summon out a uh, vision hero from the deck, which will be Vion. And Vion is, if it is normal or special, you get to send a hero from your deck to the graveyard, and that's basically a foolish burial for something like a malicious. If that wasn't enough, Vion then has the ability to banish a hero monster from the graveyard to add polymerization from your deck to the hand, and luckily, Faris is already going to be there. Now, obviously, it does get a little bit tricky if you are against Cash Tiras because you technically don't have a graveyard nine times out of ten, and that's where the go second element of this deck kicks in, and that's where you need to be as aggressive as possible. Then, for the darker side of heroes, we are playing two Destiny Hero Mali. Please can we have it back at three? Or technically in this deck with Denier, we would be having four of it because Denier can loop it once, which is beautiful. Uh, and then the one Denier with the final evil hero, a dusted gold. Now it is a go second. It is a bit more aggressive um, than most builds, which is why there are no plasmas in here. It's why there is also a dusted gold as opposed to a lot of people getting rid of this. Um, and that's purely because Cash is again, if this card is not in the graveyard, you cannot resolve your Dark Calling, um, and the Dark Calling is what leads you to Bane. However, if you do get to Bane, it will give you the capabilities of pretty much being able to break a board if their monsters can be destroyed and then their attacks are 3,000 or less, which is really, really good, and it buffs them up and goes to pretty much push in for the game kill there. Then what's making this deck just as relevant as it always was is now having free Hero Lives. I say now, this came back at free a long time ago, um, but being able to rock free of that alongside free of this just increases your consistency tenfold, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and one thing you could arguably consider for the main deck of this is running something like Ras Fear Mode. Now, sadly, Ras Fear Mode is the only one you can consider running because if you were to play anything like a Kaiju or 
or Lava Golem, you special summon them, and one of your best extra deck monsters in the Cross Crusader says that you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate either of this card's effects. So if you want to utilize him, you cannot special summon full stop, and luckily Ra's Fear Mode is a tribute summon, not a special summon. Uh, and then of course we do have the one Miracle Fusion just to kind of round off the ultis in the spell and trap lineup, uh, or mainly the spell lineup, and they all have their utilities. F Fusion Destiny is broken as heck and it's great to have that back at free as well. Uh, then for the rest of the spells, we do play Triple Mask Change 1. So this is obviously your go-to Mask Change card that gives you access to Dark Law. Uh, and then the only other card it will give you access to is Acid, but that gives you the ability to deal with Front Row and Back Row, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then the chances of you, the way you're going to Mask Change into Acid is 9 times out of 10 going to come off of Absolute Zero, and that will deal with obviously your, monster, uh, your opponent's Front Row and their Back Row in one fell swoop. As it is blind second, we are going with two Trill Tactic Thrust, and the cards that this card can search will be a Dark Hole, a Talents, a Duster, as well as access to, of course, your Miracle Fusion, not that you really want to do that way, um, your Hero Lives, and of course, into your Fusion Destiny. So it has so many natural targets anyway, that the additional targets are just one-off power cards that are going to be able to deal with the particular type of matchup you're in. For example, Dark Hole is one of them ones where you could go for a Geki if you wanted to, but it's one of them ones that if they give you Ibli, going to a Dark Hole is actually going to be more successful for you um, than anything else. A card that Chiron is playing around with is, of course, Evenly Matched. And the reason I've taken it out of my build is my build is very aggressive. The idea is to play no hand traps, which is why everything else is at a minimum, and you don't play Ash Blossom. It's all about I'll let you build your board, and then I will try to break it as consistently as I possibly can. And that is why we are playing Breakers in the form of Double Book of Eclipse and Double Econ, alongside the Duster, the Dark Hole, the Talents, the Frosts, and then everything else. So being able to get into these cards as well is going to be very important. Uh, the Econ is an option because I'm not playing uh, the Wind Mast Hero in the extra deck. The Econ is actually in here in order for my Stratos to dodge Imperms and Veilers and basically eat up one of my opponents in the gates as well as taking another one. So it will give me the ability of being able to activate um, Econ to tribute a monster and then target a face on monster my opponent controls as cost, meaning it will dodge the Imperm or the Veiler. It will then be down to my opponent to then choose to negate the Econ with something like a Baron or um, less so a Dragoon because I have to target that monster, uh, but more so a Baron and then they go, okay, cool, well, that's just, I've basically traded a negate for two because they would have used an Imperm or a Veilar, chained an Econ to dodge the Imperm or the Veilar, and then they have to try and negate the Econ, otherwise I'm just going to steal a Baron. And if I steal a Baron, I've then got a negate to protect me from everything else. So, And then the last of is the one called by the Grave, the one Foolish Barrel for mainly Shadow Mist, but it can also be uh, Denier, and it can also be um, Mali. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the one Reinforcer of the Army alongside the one Polarization. There are different versions of this deck as well. You can play double uh, Plasmas, you can play Dark Angel. I just feel it's one of these ones where if I wanted to, I could put Dark Angel in the main deck, but if I don't win the dice roll, I don't get it to go first, I can't lock my opponent out, it's pretty much a dead brick that I don't want to see in my hand. Whereas if I know I'm going first, that's where cards like Rivalry will come in, because to Dark Angel my opponent, put my stuff in defense, and then um, Rivalry them, it means they can't activate spells and traps, they're locked into Warriors, um, and then all my stuff's in defense, so they can't just switch it to attack and crash it. And if they start setting any cards, that's where DPE comes into play, because you use DPE's effect to pop, pop the back row, leave the angel on the board, and you're picking everything apart as you go. Moving on to the extra deck, so for our elemental heroes, we do have the one Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. So this is the brand new card that came out in Maze of Memories. It requires an elemental hero fusion monster and one or more warrior monster. So the Elemental Hero Fusion Monsters that we play are the Absolute Zero and the Elemental Hero Sunriser alongside the um, Iskaro. I always get the name wrong every single time, but I'm just showing you that you have three targets that can be utilized. Um, you can double up Sunrise if you want to, but the idea for me would mainly be, um, because the idea is, is Sunrise can search out Miracle Fusion and the Miracle Fusion uses Sunrise and a Warrior and gets into Wake Up. Um, so it's entirely up to you. You can change these around. You can take these out. It's entirely, it, it, like, however your play style wants to be, you can adapt it accordingly. Um, so it must be fusion summoned, and it gains 300 attack for each material used for its summon. So at the base minimum, it's going to go up to 3,100. 
It can make a number of attacks on monsters each battle phase up to the number of fusion monsters used as material. Now again, it's only really going to be one unless you've got two elemental heroes on the board. And for something like that to happen, you would have already gone through Poly to get into Sunriser. You would have already gone through Miracle to get to Absolute. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky to get that play through with Double Up. Um, after damage calculation, if this card battles a monster, destroy that monster. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. If this fusion summon card is destroyed, especially on a warrior monster from your hand or deck. Now the reason that works out so well is if it's destroyed, you get Stratos. And then in some plays, if you are playing Double Prisma, um, if you get Nibiru or anything like that, you do have the ability to still end your board on a Prisma with ideally a DPE coming back from the graveyard. Um, if you're not going down that route, the best thing about it, if it battles, is where it kind of combos off with Book of Eclipse. Unlike Trinity, that can kill off three monsters but won't be doing piercing damage, um, Elemental or Wake Up Your Elemental Hero will give you that capabilities um, to pretty much deal with your opponent's monsters and still do damage. Ideally, you want to be using this to attack twice. It's probably going to be attacking more so once. Um, but it will then do burn damage. And then if you've got DPE, keep in mind, this is where DPE comes in clutch, is let's say this attacks an opponent's monster that's in defense, pops it, burns it, and then you use DPE's effect, or a DPE attacks, and then use DPE's effect. You can destroy the wake up the elemental hero to destroy another one of your opponent's monsters. And then wake up will trigger its effect to summon out... Um, uh, will summon out like a Stratos or a basically a warrior from the deck which is really important, um, and then that Stratos can search and can attack as well. So you're just kind of putting more uh, damage. And that's the best thing about heroes is, ideally, if you can like get into this before you fusion Destiny, and then get into your DPE, and get to the battle phase before they can like, um, before you go into the Nib summon plays, that's where you're gonna have the ability to keep popping your opponent's stuff, and then use Mask Change. So Mask Change, again, whether you go for, um, Another really cool one is you actually summon out Shadow Mist. Shadow Mist searches you out in a Mask Change and then you poke for a thousand and then Mask Change into Dark Claw for 24. It also opens up doors that you could put Anki in as well if you want to do more damage. Um, and then it will also allow you, if you wanted to, off of the Stratos, go into your Hero Blast to do a 2200 damage. So there's a couple of options. It's entirely up to you. That's what I like about this day is it does have a range of options. For the Master Heroes, of course, we've got Acid. So Absolute into Acid is a full board wipe on your opponent. Acid deals with back row on summon, and Absolute will deal with uh, front row when it's sent to the graveyard or technically leaves the field. Uh, double Dark Claw, uh, purely because, you know, Dark Claw is king. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the one DPE. Um, you can bump this to if you want to, especially with cash running around, but I'm now waiting for the time that... It's only a matter of time before Mind Hacker gets hit, and I'm not willing to commit to doubling up cards for the sake of um for the sake of being targeted by mind hacker until it's confirmed that it is uh, gonna get banned or not one dystopia and then one bane alongside a trinity which is just an aggressive option so that you're basically showing to your opponent when they look at your extra deck that they have to deal with dpe wake up your hero trinity it kind of gives them more that they need to think about and bane as well so you've got a lot of boss monsters that they need to consider uh, one Dread Decimator, two Cross Crusaders, and then of course a single extra hero, Wonder Driver. I really cannot wait. I, I feel that we need to get like a new Link 1 hero or a Link 2 hero that is generic for heroes, like two warrior monsters or two hero monsters that says tribute a hero monster and negate uh, like an effect, like being an Omnimigate or a monster effect, something like that. I would love a Link monster that says two hero monsters so it can't be splashed in other decks and the capabilities of being able to tribute a hero monster, including itself, so you don't need to add another hero to the board to negate a monster effect. That would be, like, that would be ideal in order just for the heroes to be able to play through Nibiru, because trust me, that is one of its biggest weaknesses, uh, and Nibiru does slap heroes directly in the face. Uh, anyway, I hope this has given you a couple of ideas on your own build. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. Like I said, this is a concept for um, a, an OTK Go Second Hero build, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it adapts and changes and goes from there. But for now, as absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Until next time, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.